Greetings, researchers. I'm sorry that I'm not going to make the meeting tonight. I am going to be in the air while we, when uh, we are supposed to be meeting so uh, due to my travel obligations. So I'm going to just do a screencast of the, of, the, of the guiding questions tonight for your next step. And um, I have the, I'm the beginning of PowerPoint here, sorry. Um, so ED week, actually week four, um, you're, you have submitted your annotated bibliography and your thematic review of research. And now you're going to be putting together your framework, your theoretical framework for your study and the research question as you now defined it. So I, I have appreciated that many of you have added, added uh, articles to bibliography because you realize it fleshes it out better, it gives you a better broad look at um, of, at your study and at, and at the work that's already been done. Now we're going to level it up a little bit and break it in and, and support your theories, the theories that support your work. And so this, this and your research questions are due by Monday. Um, out of your uh, discussions this week, I got some, of course, wonderful quotes of the week. Sally says she likes the organization of the annotated bibliography and how it helped her to organize the information that the articles bring. It really helps to focus better and support the thoughts to follow, which is really the whole intent of the annotated bibliography. So that was really good to read. Um, both Kayla and Melissa um, were surprised to find that there are people that have an opinion, but there's plenty of contrary evidence of people that disagree with that opinion. And so that's also why you want that contrary evidence. And the, that's the best part of it, because really the contrary evidence is your springboard to your question. You want to find out how that's going to work for your students or work for you as a teacher. Uh, with Kelly says, Some, just because something isn't done in the classroom doesn't mean it shouldn't be done or it would be looked down upon. It simply means that it's a new idea, which requires time, interest, and need in order to incorporate it successfully. And so it is a lot about intent. What's, what, what will work will be what you put your energy into. I'm certainly finding the themes I want to follow for research are narrowing the more I research. And so, Julie, you know, that's the whole point. It's like when you're looking for the themes for your research question, you end up narrowing and narrowing your subject matter because you have to find material that really supports what you're asking. So, you, again, you're it's helping you refine your research question and your research question is refining how you look at things. So that's that cyclical nature of um, investigation. Tom says, I use daily writing prompts to search out information from students to reveal their interests or areas of specific knowledge and then I can go from there. I just like that. It's a very classroomy question and not so much about research, but it's the same thing. You're, you're searching information to find out specific knowledge, but um, knowing your students, I just the teacher and me really liked that quote. After noticing these repetitive themes, I decided to refine my research. Yay, repetitive themes. I also decided to take a closer look at the age levels I have and ways to improve my teaching style to better suit their developmental age abilities. I thought that I was covering this already, but maybe I need to further research how to specifically help this age level further. Again, narrowing the topic, narrowing the research question, narrowing your focus, and really examining your practice. What a beautiful beautiful thing to notice. In my research, I'm finding that my experience is not necessarily unique. And I wanted to emphasize that you're all experiencing very much the same things um, that other people have experienced and that your job is to find out how their experiences and your investigation and your interventions can support and add to the literature that already exists. There's a wealth of information on discipline and reward systems. So what is the best approach to motivating students? Stephen, the, and that's, that's the question. You want to narrow down your question. You want to narrow them down and narrow them down and narrow them down until you get to a few interventions that you want to use, maybe one or two, and you're going to implement those interventions in that three-week research window and see how they work. So you're really pulling it in and pulling it in. I also, and then Melissa says, I also plan to give a brief overview on the history of reading in our country as I feel that it sets the stage for my research. Really important to give people context. You don't need to spend pages on, on history, but you do want to provide context, which is really 
what the thematic review of literature was will be uh, this week. So let's talk a minute about writing a research question. Writing a research question requires balancing between breadth and specificity. A, re a question can be so broad that it does not offer direction in terms of what to study and how. So you're really looking for something that you can actually implement. At the same time, it can be so specific that you risk tunnel vision, leading you to miss important data or unexpected phenomena. And so when we're talking about the method methodological part of it, that's why we do triangulation of data. It's because you want to get data from different different sources so that you can confirm or say it didn't work, whatever the intervention is that you are working on. But you do need to have it specific. So in your book, um, The Art of Classroom Inquiry, they talked about distant teachers. So it's not just the articles you've read, but for example, somebody had brought in Vygotsky, somebody had brought in Piaget, somebody had brought in Oh, I think crashing. I there there are there are researchers that are sort of um, guide guide leaders in their fields, and sometimes they're the way past. But that research, even John Dewey, has said things. For example, with you know connecting with outdoors, you wouldn't think John Dewey, the educator, would talk about outdoors. But during his stay, that was very important, and it still remains important to us, even though we we're, we're so cityfied. But well, some of us are anyway. Um, those distant re teachers are really the theory that founded even the research papers that you are looking at, that p other people have written. And so what are those fields of study? And then it goes back to Melissa's comment about the history of reading. You know, you want to keep it brief, but you do need to access and support the, the research you're doing based on people that have come before you. That's the whole idea. Where are you, where are you jumping off from? So what fields of study have you dipped into that provide a springboard for your exploration? And you're looking at cognitive learning theory, early childhood play, universal design for learning, reading readiness, and so on. Um, and that's what needs to be um, fu funding your research question. And then in your thematic review, what themes have emerged from that material? You've already had a discussion on this in your reflections. How have these explorations helped you refine your study questions? and not study like I'm studying for test study questions, but your research questions. What is the relationship of your research questions to your practice as a teacher and student success? And some of you are already commenting on that, and that is just so important. That's the whole point. And what is your purpose of, of picking the interventions based on the theory that you've, that you've been looking at and the research that you've been looking at? And what questions do you have to directly explore, measure your research questions? So really, your research question is what you're going to measure and that's what you're thinking in your mind. How am I going to measure this research question? How am I going to see if, it, if I can implement something and see if it works or not for me, for my students? Once you've narrowed down your area, write down your question, considering it as a first draft, just get it down on the paper. And I've seen a, a, most of you have, are really getting your research question nailed down. I'm seeing it already. And I think just doing the annotated bibliography and thinking about it and talking with your critical friends has helped you do that. Write as fully as you need to, as a whole paragraph if necessary. Play with it, writing in several different ways until you have all the information you want included in it. Does it still intrigue you? You're going you're gonna to be living with this question all semester, so you want to make sure it's something that interests you, that you know you want to find out about how it's going to work with you and your students. If yes, go on to refine it. If no, see where you lost enthusiasm and rephrase and rework it until you get that aspect back into your draft because you want to be enthusiastic in terms of what your in, your intervention because this is going to this will carry through with you beyond this class. Not only are you contributing um, literature and support to people to other teachers and other colleagues, but you are really reflecting and uh, leveling up your own practice however new or however seasoned you are as an educator. And give yourself permission to modify your question as you continue with your investigation. So you're not at the methodology yet. You're not, you're not doing the research yet. But you need this is just for you to really start pinning it down. So I keep talking about methodologies. And after the thematic review, when you've, you've collected all your information into themes, which will be at the end of, of which, which you've just submitted, you're looking at the methodology. So you need to have a methodology in mind as you write your research question statement. And that's, you're thinking of how am I going to measure this in the context of my study. 
And so you want to have a variety and look through all that research you've done to see what people have used. And some of it will be evident, some of it won't. Uh, and what you're, you're doing is combining this information. It's not even you can combine, you will combine. You want at least three, three different sources of data. And the, the notes and the observations you're taking now are actually part of the sources of data. You should already be taking notes in a journal and, and thinking and looking at your classrooms uh, to see how it's working. Field notes, um, same. It's, the field notes are really directly related to when you're implementing the research. A narrative, um, just if you have a case study and, and you're describing what has happened over time. Interviews, very, really handy. Interviews and surveys. Um, but, and we're going to talk later on about how interviews and surveys should look because there's a specific, <clears throat> there's a specific, specific way to present them that is language neutral, that is uh, not lead, you're not leading questions, you're leaving it open for the respondents to give you honest answers without you, without wanting to please you or, or meet your expectations. Demographic data, you know, tests, um, just the demographics of a school. Document analysis, recurring patterns that you see, see uh, in pre and post intervention. Phenomenological, which is just what happens. Case study, grounded theory, don't use grounded theory. And in the, in, on the case, on the, I'll show you, but on the, um, there's a list of types of, of methodologies you can use, quali qualitative research methodologies. And really, grounded theory is just so, like, expansive and extensive, that, and it really isn't practical for your situation. You really want to have it practical. That's the whole point of not using grounded theory. So you'll categorize, there's possible ways to categorize the notes as you look through your observations. This is something to think, like we're thinking ahead. Remember, we're not, this isn't real linear, but you're thinking ahead and you're thinking back. How are you collecting data? Where are you collecting data? What's supporting the data, which is your theoretical foundations, which is what you're going to be submitting. And personal, what is affecting what I'm seeing? So what's coloring your view? And when I give you feedback, I'll be talking about being neutral and pulling yourself kind of back as an observer, even as you're implementing and reflecting on how it's affecting your practice. So by Friday, set your meeting up for your critical friends. I hope they're going well. I'm, I'm sensing that they are, for the most part. Please make sure to submit your, your papers to your critical friends for comments. They, you, as critical friends, you don't have to give like detailed feedback. But if you have, I notice, I wonder, I notice this about what you've written, and I really wonder about that, and um, uh, even down to APA formatting. So just revise, but it's really important to do that before you submit your assignments on Monday. So your theoretical foundation uh, will be based on overarching themes and your research question, and that's due by next Monday. Uh, your essential question for Friday is what methods have I learned about in the research literature that I can use to collect data? What new methods will I need to design? So uh, what you want to do is go back to the guiding questions in this document. And, or in this PowerPoint and use those when you're looking at your, the work of your, critical, of your critical friends and when you're giving feedback to your critical friends. Now I want to just show you what we're looking at for this week. So we're at week five. You've submitted your thematic review of your literature and you need to read the Art of Classroom Inquiry, Chapters 2 and 3, as well as the appendices, appendices A and C. Look through those because they have some great, great um, examples. And then um, Teachers Doing Research, Chapter 3. That's what you want to read this week. <clears throat> There's your research question, or your reflection question, I'm sorry, your essential question reflection. Your theoretical framework and your research question to do Monday next. And uh, next Tuesday we'll have our web meeting is optional and just know that you're as you're doing all this now you've done the annotated bibliography you've done the thematic review of literature you will have finished your your theoretical foundation and once you do your methodology which will be the week after all that is going to be put together and your proposal will be ready the meeting on 216 is one that we are everybody is required to attend to the very best of your ability because we're going to have peer review and this is a really excellent opportunity for you to get some feedback. So, um, 
I also want to show you really quickly what we're looking at in terms of the course content. The material that you're going to be looking at is in week five. Please spend some time, four or five, looking at these materials, theoretical foundations, definition and guide, writing good research questions, and so forth. So this, all this material is going to help you this week in setting up your theoretical framework and framing your research question. So there's all sorts of very excellent support for you uh, for this, um, for this section. So with that, I thank you for uh, watching the, the screencast. and. I'm sorry to miss you in person, so please send your questions to me via email and I will respond to them as quickly as I can. I'm going to be getting to your um, thematic reviews starting tonight when I get home, which will be late, but not that late. I'll be home about 8. So at that, with that, I'm going to sign off and wish you a great week and thank you for your hard work and I'm so excited about your studies. I'm just so excited. It makes me want to do a whole bunch of research studies myself, and it's like the university doesn't do research for their professors anymore, and darn, you know, I, you guys have such great ideas, and there's so many springboards that even I would like to try. So um, carry on and keep up the good work, and we'll talk to you next week.